Ladies and gentlemen, if I could have your attention, please. In just a moment, we're going to begin the funeral service of Karen M. Goldblatt. For those of you who are here, please take a moment to be sure that your cell phones have been turned off. We welcome those of you who are joining us via live stream. Rabbi Sidney Hellbrown will be officiating. He is the rabbi of Temple Bethel in Northbrook. This time he's going to approach the family to perform the ancient ceremony of Kriya. I ask Karen's son and daughter to please rise. Everybody? No, oh, just me? Okay. Okay. No, Mitchell. Mitchell, Mitchell well. Thank you. Thank you. Very yes. Much. All right, so you'll repeat after me. Baruch Ata Adonai. Baruch atah Adonai. Eloheinu melech haolam. Eloheinu melech haolam. Dayan ha'emet. Dayan ha'emet. We praise you, O Lord our God, judge of truth. Adonai ma'adam v'teda ehu, benino shvad chashvehu, adam lehevel dama, yamav kitzel over, baboker yatsitz v'chalaf, le'erev yamalel v'yavesh, tashev enosh ad daka v'tomar shuvu v'nei adam, Lu chochmu yaski luzot, yavinu la acharitam, ki lo v'moto yikach hakol, lo ye red acharav kvodo, shmor tam or eyashar, ki acharit leish shalom, podeh adonai nefesh avadav, velo ye shmu kol hachosim bo. Adonai, what are we that you have regard for us? What are we that you are mindful of us? We are like a breath. Our days are like a passing shadow. We come and go like grass, which in the morning shoots up renewed, and in the evening fades and withers. You cause us to turn to dust, saying, Return, O mortal creatures. Would that we were wise, that we understood whither we are going. For when we die, we carry nothing away. Our glory does not accompany us. Mark the wholehearted, and behold the upright. They shall have peace. Adonai, you redeem the souls of your servants and none who trust in you shall be desolate. Death has taken our beloved Karen Goldblatt. Our friends grieve in their darkened world. In their silence, there is lamentation. In their tears, there is loneliness. Lost in their sorrow, may they find the presence of loving friends. Hear them, O oh God, be with them. For Karen's love that united us in life and which death cannot sever, for her companionship that we shared along life's path and which continues through the tenderness of memory, for the gifts of her heart and mind that brought us joy and happiness and is now a precious remembrance. For all these and more, we give our thanks to God. In this time of grief, we listen to the voice of our sacred scriptures that brings us the ever new message of God's nearness. It tells us of our kinship with the Creator in light 
as in darkness, in joy as in sorrow, in life as in death. Adonai roi lo echsar, bino desha yar bitseni, alme minuchot yenahaleni, nafshi shoved, yanchini vamagale tzedek leman shemo, gam ki e lech begeit sal mavet, lo i ra ra ki ata imadi. Shiv techa umi shantecha, hema yenachamuni, ta aroch lefanai shulchan neged sorarai, di shanta vashemen roshi, kosi rivaya, ach tov vechesed yirdefuni, kol yeme chayai, vishavti bevet adonai, laorech yamim. Those were the words of the 23rd Psalm, which you can find on the inside of the handout. I invite you to join with me in the English. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Esa enai el haharim, me ayin yavo ezri. Ezri me im adonai, o se shemaim va'aretz. I lift my eyes to the mountains, what is the source of my help? My help comes from Adonai, maker of heaven and earth. God will not let your foot give way. Your protector will not slumber. See, the protector of Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. God is your guardian. God is your protection at your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. God will guard you from all harm. God will guard your soul, your going and coming, now and forever. In his sorrow, Job cried out, Adonai Natan va'adonai lakach. Yehi shame Adonai Mavarach. Job cried, God has given and God has taken away. But blessed be the name of God. In ancient people, we are well acquainted with grief and with the valley of shadows. Death and sorrow are not strangers to us, yet the centuries have taught us that a good name endures beyond the grave, and that there is strength in faith. With Job we say, Adonai Natan, God, you have given. You gave us a loved one who will not be forgotten for all that was good and enduring in her life. We offer the deepest thanks of our hearts. Adonai Lakach, God, you have taken away. We pray for the strength to turn our broken hearts into an altar of trust, before which we acknowledge your sovereignty and love, as we now say, Yehi shame Adonai Mevarach. 
Blessed be the name of God, now and forever. We take a moment now for silent remembrance. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. In reviewing the book of Ecclesiastes, our rabbis taught that the verse, blessed shall you be when you come in, refers to one's coming into this world. And blessed shall you be when you go out refers to one's departing this earth. And regarding the verse, there is a time to be born and a time to die. Rabbi Barachia said, since everyone knows that there is a time when a person is born and a time when they die, there must be a hidden meaning. And so he taught, happy is a person whose time of death is like the time of their birth. When a person is born, he said, they are innocent. And so when a person dies, they should be innocent as well. Friends, I have a feeling that your Nana Karen would have hated Rabbi Barachia's teaching. I can hear her saying, Innocent? At the end of their life, a person should be innocent? Who wants to be innocent? A person needs to be smart. A person needs to know what's going on in the world, what's going on around them. A person needs to watch over their family to make sure they know how to take care of themselves, how to look out for their own interests, Is an innocent person going to be able to do that? No, she'd say. A person needs to be smart. When I think about the verse, there is a time to be born and a time to die in relation to your Nana Karen. I think it refers not to innocence and not to smarts, but to a blessing. Just as a child is a blessing to their parents, their grandparents, and their family when she is born, so too should be a person be a blessing to their children, grandchildren, and family when they die. A blessing due to the lessons they taught, the example they set, the love they gave, and the gifts they shared a blessing. Not only do I believe that Nana Karen would accept the idea of being a blessing, I think she would feel a sense of satisfaction in knowing how many blessings she brought, taught, and gave, and how blessed each of you feel for her presence in her lives, in your lives. 
Karen Goldblatt was born 82 years ago, the eldest child of her loving parents, Ida and David Marcus, and grew up in Chicago. After graduating from high school, Karen attended the University of Illinois and became a beloved Chicago public school teacher, where she invested decades of her life helping to lift up young children who are growing up in difficult circumstances, helping create a foundation on which they might achieve a better future. And I have to imagine that over those 35 years, she changed the path of many, many lives. It was around the time that she began her career that Karen met her, the love of her life, at a dance at Temple Emmanuel. They both knew right away that they had found their life partner, and they were soon married. The result? A wonderful marriage of 60 years, a beautiful family, becoming Nana to a large and loving clan, developing deep, warm, honest relationships with her children and grandchildren, and seeing them arrive at the next stage of their lives as they began careers, formed their own relationships, and began to marry. It was not long after Karen and Herb married that they moved to Lincolnwood, where Jill and Mitchell were born. And after their children grew, they moved out to Northbrook, where Jill and Max followed a few years later. For Chanel and Dior, they had the blessing of growing up with a babysitter, with babysitters on call, as Nana Karen and Papa Herb enjoyed spending time with their granddaughters. And the girls loved their sleepovers. And Nana Karen and Papa Herb were every bit of presence in David and Michael's lives when they came around as well. There's no one who would ever question that Nana Karen was the matriarch of her family. It was a status she earned not only because her home became the central gathering place for the family, be it the Jewish holidays or Thanksgiving or weekly family gatherings, but in truth, more than this, she earned her title through her clear, direct style of communication. There was nothing politically correct about her language. She let you know exactly what she thought. And her family respected her advice because they came to learn that 95% of the time she was right. And they knew that the words she spoke were intended for your own benefit, making sure that others would respect and value you as much as you deserved to be. While Nana Karen devoted herself to her family, she was also blessed by those around her. She could not have chosen a better husband than she did with Herb, and she could not have had more devoted children than Mitchell and Jill. Mitchell, who provided constant support, looking in on her daily, making sure she had everything she needed, which became even more important after Herb died. And Jill, with her medical background, who managed her health care and honored her wishes, as well as Max, who also ensured she had the best care possible and that no stone was ever left unturned. During these past years, this assistance was invaluable. Even before Herb passed away, he and Karen had a long spell of serious health issues. And after he was gone, her challenges continued. Honestly, if she had been a cat, I'm pretty sure we'd say she used up every one of her nine lives, and then some. And yet, despite the hardships, Karen lived the life she wanted. She lived her way, in her own home, with support and care of family, 
remaining an active presence in their lives, offering her knowledge and insights, and knowing that she was deeply valued and appreciated. And while tremendous credit goes towards her family, it also goes to Eris, who was Herb's caregiver and then became hers. More than support, Eris became a part of the family, which is truly grateful for how you honored Karen and Herb in their lifetimes, ensuring that they were always treated with honor and respect. Friends, as our rabbis taught, no one lives forever. But to have a wonderful husband, a fulfilling career, to have a great number of friends, to see a child marry, to become a grandmother to four, to be present as a granddaughter spoke her wedding vows in your home in the same spot where Jill and Max were wed. To be loved, appreciated, and respected by all your grandchildren and help guide them on the next steps of their journeys, I don't think there's anything that could be more fulfilling than what Nana Karen achieved in her lifetime. The psalmist taught that a good name is better than precious oil, that a good name is better than anything else we might strive to acquire in this world. For when the moment comes for us to depart this earth, we carry nothing else away. Our glory does not accompany us. Karen Goldblatt was a wonderful, caring daughter and wife, a loving mother, a revered grandmother, and a great friend. She was a woman who strived to make the world a better place over the years of her career and to make sure her family would achieve their full potential. She enjoyed 60 years of marriage, a beautiful life in Northbrook and in Florida, and the satisfaction of knowing that she was loved and honored and respected. Yes, Karen Goldblatt lived a good life and will ever be remembered for blessing. Zecher Tzadik Livracha. And let us say, Amen. Amen. Karen is going to be remembered now first uh, by Jill and then Mitchell and then her grandchildren, Chanel, Dior, David and Michael. My mother, Karen Goblet, was the matriarch of our family. She was strong, outspoken, intelligent, a genius in investing, and most of all, the most generous person. Every day I spoke to her on the phone. I would tell her about my wonderful new life in Naples, Florida. She wanted to know about it in vivid detail. She always asked about my husband, Max, our four children, and their life partners. If I told her that one of the children was having a hard time in something, she would always say that we needed to help them. We made a plan together, and of course, they were our number one priority. Family always came first, and the traditions that she taught me. She was the best role model. My brother Mitchell, and I took care of her and her caregiver, Eris. We promised her that we would never put her in a nursing home. We kept our promise. Life will never be the same without her, but our memories will last a love lifetime. I love you, Mom.
I just want to thank everybody for coming. Uh, we're in a lot of pain, and she'll be missed. She was a wonderful person, and things won't be the same. And I, I hope, I hope she's in a better place. And I'm gonna miss the nights that I used to lay down in bed with her and keep her company. And she was just a a wonderful woman. And it's very hard. It's gonna take a it's gonna take me some time to get used to this. And uh, I. Uh, I just wish, uh, I was hoping that she would make it another five years, but I, but also I, I had a feeling something was this, like this was gonna happen, but I wasn't sure, so that's why I, I made sure I stayed with her every night and kept her company. And I just hope, uh, I just hope she'll be in a better place and we're always going to think of her and things will, will never be the same. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. Um, what? Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, I know that this is a hard time for everyone. We definitely thought that Nana Karen was going to make it longer, um, and we definitely wanted that. I know she was looking forward to, you know, my upcoming wedding and, you know, uh, Dior and, and Joe starting a family and you know, many things to look forward to, so we're definitely going to miss her. Um, Nana Karen was more than just the matriarch of our family. She was the heart and soul that kept us together. Her love and devotion really knew no bounds, especially for her children and grandchildren, who she cherished, and of course, Eris as well. Her sharp wit and wisdom were a marvel to witness, remaining with her till the very end. To her, her family was worth the world, and she always gave us wonderful advice to make sure that the whole world knew it. As we say goodbye today, let us not, re not only remember the incredible person that she was, but the profound impact that she had on each of our lives. Let us carry forward her legacy of love, strength, and resilience. Nana Karen, your presence will be deeply missed, but your spirit will live on every day in all of us. Um, I just wanna say I love my grandma very much. I just talked to her on Wednesday and she was always, she was always there for me and said I could call her any time, and I'll really miss her. Yeah, there's really nothing that, you know, I've, I can say that hasn't been said already. She, she was just a rock in our lives, and I couldn't give uh, any more credit than, you know, what deserves to be, you know, given than to Eris. You know, Eris was a huge part of her life, and so is Mitchell and mom. And you guys really helped keep her going through all the hospital visits. And, you know, I'm really gonna miss family dinners with her and seeing her win Rummy Cube. And um, yeah, it, you know, I'm happy that I made more of an effort to keep in touch with her, you know, leading up to it. Um, just a really great lesson to keep in touch with your loved ones, because you never, know when that moment's gonna come. And 
you know, she's really going to be missed and everything that's been said today is so beautiful. And just say, I love you and miss you forever, Nana. You really lived a great life. Um, thank you for everybody for being here in the first place. Um, I love you and miss you, Nana. Uh, we all do. Um, I'm always going to remember when uh, me, her, and my papa had sleepovers, and papa would get donuts in the morning, and we'd always have such a great time, everybody all together. Um, I loved talking to her. She loved hearing about everybody's futures, and she really cared about everyone so deeply. And um, I also, towards later in her life, I'll never forget the fight that she did just to spend a little bit more time with us. She loved just talking to us on the phone, and she learned how to call us on the phone, too, on her iPhone, which is pretty special, too. Um, I'm obviously going to really miss talking to her. Um, she cared, and she would do so much for every single one of us. And thank you again to Eris, Uncle Mitchell, and Mom for really doing everything in your power to keep her alive for this long. There were so many times where we thought it would be it, and it still doesn't really feel real. But it just shows that how much she fought and yes, um, I love you and miss you, Nana, always, and we all will. Thank you. And truly, there is no greater tribute um, than to have the words of your children and grandchildren um, echoing, um, filled with love and appreciation. Um, thank you for sharing. Into your care, O oh God, we entrust the spirit of Karen Goldblatt. For you keep faith with your children in death as in life. Sustain us that we may meet with serenity the mysteries that lie ahead, knowing that when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you, God, are with us, a loving friend in whom we put our trust. You are the light of our life, our hope in eternity. I'll ask us to rise now for our memorial prayer. El Malay Rachamim, Shochin Bam Romim, Hamtse Menucha Nechona Tachat Kanfeha Shchina, Im Kedoshim Uthorim, Gazohar Harakia Mazirim, Et Nishmat Kalman, Karen Goldblatt, Shahalcha Le Ulama, Bal Harachamim Yasti Reha Beseta Kanafav Le Ulamim, Vitsror bitsror hachayim et nishmata. Aronai hu nachalata. Vitanuach bishalom al mishkava. Vinomar, amen. Compassionate God, eternal spirit of the universe, grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence to Kalman, Karen Goldblatt, who has entered eternity. O God of mercy, let her find refuge in your eternal presence, and let her soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. God is her inheritance. May she rest in peace. And let us say, Amen. You can be seated for a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, there'll be a private family entombment at West Lawn Cemetery. The family will be returning to the Goldblatt residence at 3652 Palm Canyon Drive in Northbrook. They'll be together from 12 to 9 p.m. this evening. Memorial contributions to Temple Bethel or Hadassah Chicago chapter. That information is on the service folder. And for those of you who are joining us online, that information can be found uh, on our funeral home's website. 
this time I invite everyone to please rise and stand in place as we escort the casket of Karen Goldblatt along with her family from the chapel, then you may return to your cars. Thank you. 